everyone and welcome back to a brand new CBL video. Today I'm going to be doing my top 10 most played games of 2018. A lot of amazing games came out last year. I didn't have the chance to play every single one of them. So some of the big games that might be on your list that I didn't get a chance to play include God of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Detroit Become Human just to name a few. But I did play a lot of games that did release last year as you're going to see with them being on the list. But this is my top 10 most played games of 2018 so this includes games that released back in either 2016 2017 these are games that are live service type games that you constantly evolve and grow since release with free updates and expansions uh, so let me know your top 10 games either from just 2018 or games that you played in 2018 so with all that said let's jump into it I wish I could go back to my town. Hey, just the son I wanted to see. <laughs> the cops are talking to everybody at school. Hey, don't ever touch my brother. I didn't do anything. Okay, step away, now. Calm down, officer. Shut up. On the ground, now. This is a nightmare. Coming in at number 10 is Season 2, Episode 1 of Life is Strange. I'm a big fan of this series. I really loved Life is Strange Season 1 and Life is Strange Before the Storm. There are games I can easily recommend to anyone to play. And I'm happy to say, just by playing the first episode of Season 2, I'm really enjoying it. It's fantastic. It's well written. You're playing as a completely new character named Sean. And you have to take care of his brother Daniel after certain events happen. I'm not going to go into it too much. I just have to say, great story. Fantastic music as to be expected from this series if you're familiar with it and I'm really enjoying it and can't wait to see how this develops and what's going to happen. What crazy shenanigans is Sean and Daniel going to get into as this journey continues. We should have been there. Well, this, this is awkward. I, you, you got a gun I can borrow. <coughs> This is not your fault. Any last words? <coughs> How's your sister? Bungie really delivered with the Forsaken expansion. Before that, players were just leaving the game constantly because there wasn't anything to do, there was no end game, but Forsaken fixed all that with an amazing story, a new raid, and plenty of stuff to grind for. Destiny's gameplay has always been spot on, and now that Bungie fixed the whole looting system and the end game, and the new raid that is fantastic and really challenging, I was very happy to play a lot of Destiny in 2018 and I can't wait to see what Bungie has in the future going forward now that they split from Activision. So good luck Bungie, I'm looking to play more Destiny in 2019. Dragon Ball Fighters is an amazing game. A Dragon Ball game has never looked this good. The gameplay is so buttery smooth, it's intense. Even though I wasn't 100% sold on the whole 3v3 fighting aspect, the second I started playing it, even when it was in a, the beta, I grew to love it and it's one of my favorite fighting games. It's just so intense, so fun. The combos, everything, just the art style, how it looks, it all comes together really well. And I highly recommend, if you have not played Dragon Ball Fighters, to go check it out because it has so many great characters in it and it's just so fun. Amazing, ain't it? Monster Hunter World is a brilliant game and even better if you're into RPGs. The progression system in this, the whole loot aspect, just constantly getting stronger, getting new weapons and new armor. Lots of different variations on the gameplay with the different fighting styles that you can get. Everything about this game is just fantastic. The combat, just going head to head against monsters that are a million times bigger than you and just out to kill you with all the different variations of them and how crazy their moveset is. It's a very hard game. 
when you're first playing it if you never played a Monster Hunter game before. Uh, but it's not that hard to get into. This version is a lot easier, it's more westernized and just a lot easier overall to get into compared to previous Monster Hunter games. So if you have played a Monster Hunter game and it wasn't your cup of tea, I highly recommend giving this game a shot because I think it's worth it. I think I smell a barbecue. Looks like I've got some things to do. Spyro the Reignite Trilogy is one of the best remakes I've played. All three of the original games have been built from the ground up for the new generation of consoles. What the developers Ties for Bobs did with the Spyro the Reignite Trilogy is literally fantastic. The Spyro, all three games look visually breathtaking and it just blows you away. I'm having such a fantastic time going through all the games again because I never cleared Spyro 1. So it was so amazing, like a great feeling to go back and play it and actually finish it. Me and Samantha have been playing this one together and it's just been amazing. So if you're a fan of Spyro, if you grew up or played some of the older games that came out on the PS2 and 3 and so on, I highly recommend going back to the original roots from the creators of Asomniac Games. I totally butchered their name, I know. Uh, but yeah, Spyro, fantastic game. I highly recommend picking up this collection because it's not one you're going to want to miss. Soldier, keep on marching on. Get down to the work is done. Waiting on that morning sun. Soldier, keep on marching on. For Honor seen a great year in 2018 with the inclusion of dedicated servers and its massive expansion, March and Fire, which included new characters, new faction, a new game mode called Breach, which is basically a big siege battle. It's done really well, very enjoyable. The gameplay overall in For Honor is really fun, it's tight, it's hard to learn at the start, but it has a really good tutorial to help you jump into it. And then with the dedicated servers, you don't really have to worry about lag, because that was the main issue the game had when it first came out. The game also received lots of game tweaks, balance updates, and reworks for certain characters. So the game is probably a lot different now than when you last played it. I highly recommend it because I have so much fun playing this, either if I'm doing 1v1, duel, or if I'm playing the new game mode Siege. So with all that said, if you haven't already, check out For Honor. One more big score, we got enough money to leave. What do you think? Red Dead Redemption 2, the game we've all been waiting years to play, I'm happy to say Rockstar delivered yet again with another fascinating open world game that literally just there's so much to do. I have to say I'm not quite finished yet, I am ch on chapter 6 so I have a little bit to go but I'm almost at the end of the game and I'm literally just blown away by how much detail and things there are to do in this world. Right now in its current state, the online mode just isn't up to scratch as it is with like with GTA Online, but I'm still having a good time. I can't wait to see uh, how it turns out in the future with the updates that's going to be coming out for it. But with all that said, the single player alone for this game will blow you away. You're going to have up to hundreds of hours of stuff to do. It's currently the game I'm playing through right now. I can't wait to see how the chapter ends. I highly recommend playing through Red Dead Redemption. Peter Parker, how the hell are you? The city is in danger. It needs our help. All of our help. All right, well, call the play, coach. Gang of costume nut jobs is taking the city apart piece by piece. Time I return the favor. Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4 is not only my favorite Spider-Man game of all time, it is also my favorite Spider-Man story. What Insomniac Games did with this is literally just mind blown. The combat is so fun. You literally feel like Spider-Man when you're just fighting, swinging around. They got the web swinging spot on. It is so fun to just go from point A to point B. Never once did it get boring to just go a very long distance to complete a mission. I always had a blast just swinging around the sea, trying to save people. 
just solving crime, being Spider-Man. The story is fantastic, it's emotional, so much stuff happens, which I do give them a lot of credit for. I have not completed the story DLC campaigns that have come out for the game. I do have them installed on my PlayStation. I just haven't had a chance to play them yet, but I will be going back to Spider-Man very soon to complete them and maybe even finish 100% in the game. So if you haven't played the game yet and you do own a PlayStation 4, you owe yourself to download the game, give it a shot because it is fantastic. I know a lot of other people stopped playing Sea of Thieves quickly after it came out due to the lack of content, there wasn't as much to do and the world wasn't as lively as they wanted it to be. But now nearly a year after the game has released, Rare has released 4 free updates, 4 expansions called The Hungering Deep, Cursed Sails, Forsaken Shores and Shrouded Spoils. All of these have added a lot to the game and since the Shrouded Spoils update I've been playing this game a lot. It is my main multiplayer game that I've been turning on recently and I'm just trying to get as much gold as I can so I can get more loot for my ship, more customized options, more stuff for my character and it's just so such a blast because the multiplayer experiences that you get with this uh, it's just so amazing, it's so fun, they're memories that you don't forget like just getting fighting a kraken when you're on your way back with a ship full of loot just lots of treasure chests everywhere and then a kraken or a megalodon or other pirates attack you like it is so fun and i just can't wait to see how this game develops in 2019 because rare have already shared they have massive plans they already announced the arena and a new quest system that they're going to add to the game and i can't wait because i'm really enjoying seeing it too so if you haven't played it or if the last time you played it was when it came out I recommend jumping back on and giving it another shot because it has changed a lot since release. So Fortnite Battle Royale is my most played game in 2018, which probably isn't a surprise to anyone if you've seen any videos on my channel or if you follow me on Twitter or see me talk about games in someone else's podcast because Fortnite is a game I tend to talk about and it's a game I love even though it's not my favorite game of 2018 because technically it hasn't even released yet. It's still in beta. Who knows how many more years that's going to have that little uh, beta logo on it. But Fortnite Battle Royale is a game I love. I haven't been playing it as much recently uh, because I've just been playing other games. That doesn't take away how much I've played it throughout the year, jumping into the seasons. Uh, one thing I have to give credit for, Epic Games have been su such an amazing job with the seasons. All the free updates, like all the weapons and everything they add to the game. How much the map's constantly changing. changing it's amazing. Uh, the gameplay is solid, it's fun, and also credit to getting crossplay on everything this year for Fortnite. So if you haven't played Fortnite, I assume everyone has because of the amount of people that have downloaded it and it's on phones now. So I assume everyone has kind of played it or, or is aware of it, so I'm not going to get into too much with it. Um, but Fortnite is my most played game. Let me know your top 10 most played games of 2018 in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Hey everyone, if you've made it this far, that means you've made it to the end of the video. And I just want to say thank you all for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up button and click any of the video links that are displayed now if you want to see more content from me. Have a great day.